What's up everyone? I hope you're doing well today. So in the past, a lot of people have asked me to see some of the bigger books in my personal collection. Well, today I'm going to be going over the top 10 Spider-Man issues that I own. It could be a key, maybe I just really like the cover, or it has some significant value to me. So keep watching this video to see who claims number one. Stay tuned. Welcome back everyone, Air Comics here, and today I'm going to be going over my top 10 Spider-Man issues that I own in my personal collection. But before I get started on that, if you are new to the channel, I drop weekly comic book content, and if you want to join a community that's dedicated to comic books and raising awareness for mental health, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and the little bell to get notified. Every time I drop new content, you won't regret it. And now, without further ado, let's get started on this top 10 list. Alright, so as a lot of you guys already know, I'm a massive Spider-Man fan. I've got posters and figures all throughout this room, so I figured why not make a top 10 list of my favorite issues that I own. So this one that I'm going to talk about first didn't make the top 10 list, but it is a very nice honorable mention. We've got Web of Spider-Man number one. I picked this one mainly because of the cover. I think it's a beautiful cover. I think it is the third ongoing of Spider-Man. And Web of Venom isn't exactly the sought after run, so you can still get a copy of this for pretty cheap. I think maybe roughly 20 ish dollars on eBay right now. But look at that beautiful artwork on that cover. It is a newsstand as well. The one issue I was having with it is definitely has some spine ticks. It's on the dirtier side. It's not the best of conditions, but I didn't really spend a whole lot of money on it in the first place. Like I was saying, you can still get a copy of this for around $20 on eBay if you don't have one. But for those reasons, it's just an honorable mention. Didn't make the top 10 list. But now we've got coming in at number 10, Marvel Team Up, Spider-Man, and Daredevil. This is issue 141, and I picked this one because it's in beautiful condition for me. It is a newsstand, and it's an early black suit appearance. Now, a lot of people do speculate. They kind of go back and forth thinking that either Amazing Spider-Man 252 is the first actual black suit appearance, but there's a lot of other people out there, too that say this is the first appearance of the black suit. But in my opinion, it's just an early appearance. I don't think this is the actual first appearance, but I don't have an issue 252. So this is the next best thing that I got. So for those reasons, coming in at number 10. And now we've got coming in at number nine, The Amazing Spider-Man, number 36. This is the 9-11 tribute issue. And you know, for me, I'm a 90s kid. So by the time 2001 hit, I'm coming up on the teenage years a little bit younger than that. So I knew what 9-11 was. I saw it all in the news. My teachers were crying and I was old enough to realize what happened. So for me, and I grew up on the East Coast. I grew up in Pennsylvania, as a lot of you guys already know. So New York's not too far away from us. It's a few hours of a drive. I personally wasn't really affected by it. I had no family members in the area, but I did know people who were affected by it. So for me, this is a must have in my collection. My copy, it isn't the best of copies. It's definitely more on the reader side. It's got a little bit of spine ticks, but mainly there's a lot of weaves going on the page, a little bit of creases here and there on the back side of it. So obviously you can't see that right now, but for those reasons coming in at number nine, I think for any Spider-Man fan and anybody who grew up in that time period, this is definitely a must have for your collection. And up next, we've got coming in at number 8, The Amazing Spider-Man number 66. This is an early appearance of Mysterio. Look at this beautiful cover. It's so cool. Mine, sadly, very dirty. It's got some spine ticks on it. But you know what? I didn't spend a lot of money on it, and it's definitely a reader copy. I wasn't getting this to sell it, so I'm just really happy to have it in my collection. And I've talked to a lot of people. I don't know. A lot of people don't really like Mysterio, but I grew up loving Mysterio. For some reason, I thought he was so cool. I love this costume, and I love the fact that he doesn't actually have real powers. He relies on his masters of visual effects, and he can trick people into thinking things are actually real, when in reality, they're not even there. And growing up, I thought that was so cool. So I love Mysterio, and for those reasons, coming in at number eight. And up next, we've got coming in at number seven, Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars number eight. This is the origin of the symbiote that later becomes Venom. And I picked this one because I love Venom. I love everything that entails the symbiotes. If it's got a symbiote in it, I'm pretty much going to love it. My copy, however, like the rest of these pretty much, it's a reader copy. You can tell there's a massive color breaking crease going right down the center. It is a newsstand though, so that's definitely pretty cool too. And this is also a really good read. I know a lot of people, they don't, some people don't really read their comics. They get it just to try to flip. Maybe they like a cover or a character, but if you haven't 
actually read Secret Wars, definitely give it a shot. It's a fantastic read. And plus, it's got so much history with being the origin story of the symbiote that later becomes Venom. So for those reasons, coming in at number seven. And up next, we've got coming in at number six. I know I've showed this one off before, but I can't get enough of this one. We've got The Amazing Spider-Man number 365. This is kind of the first appearance of Spider-Man 2099. However, it is in a previews page that, and the preview is the actual Spider-Man 2099 issue. So take that for what it is. I know some people go batshit crazy over previews. Other people say, no, nah, it's not the first real appearance. Either way, that's not why this is on my top list. I picked this one because look at that awesome signature end remark by Sam De La Rosa. I met him at New World Comics in Oklahoma City. He was doing a signing. He also did my Venom Lethal Protector, but that one didn't make the list because this is strictly Spider-Man today. And I love, I love this so much. I'm so happy I have it in my collection. He was a super nice guy. I was able to talk to him. He even came back, I think, the next day, and he came back... I believe a few months later, I wasn't able to go back for that one, but I was there, I got a picture with him, and as I was saying, incredibly nice dude, and of course it was at New World Comics, which is the best comic book shop in Oklahoma City, you definitely need to go check them out if you're in the area, but for all those reasons, like I was saying, it kind of is the first appearance of Spider-Man 2099, but it is in a previews, but that's not why this made the list. It made it because of this incredible signature and remark. And for those reasons, coming in at number six. And now we're down to my top five Spider-Man issues that I own. So coming in at number five, we've got Amazing Spider-Man number 361, the first appearance of Carnage. New stand, beautiful, beautiful copy. So I've upgraded this issue I think three times now. I had a lower grade. It had a nice little tear in it. So that sucked. And I upgraded that one. Now, I had an opportunity to sell that and I put all the money towards this one. This one is 100% getting graded at some point. I've been waiting for either CBCS or CGC to have some sort of in house signing. I know I missed one, I think, from Mark Bagley a little while back, but I didn't have this copy in hand just yet. I was a little bit late to it. But man, the only problem I'm having with this, I would honestly put this one at around a 9 2 or a 9. For it does have a little crease up in the corner right there. I don't know if you can see that too easily on the camera, but there are no spine ticks on this bad boy. And you guys already know, I just talked about it in the last couple issues. I love symbiotes, I love venom, carnage, I love everything about that. So to have this in my collection at such a high grade, that really makes me happy. So coming in at number five. And now we've got coming in at number four, The Amazing Spider-Man number 41, the first appearance of the Rhino. Look at this beautiful, beautiful cover. I know it's an incredibly low condition, but get this. I paid $45 for this about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. I didn't even care what the condition was. I saw it and I saw the price and I thought to myself, you know what, I've got to get this one. The Rhino is such an important character to Spider-Man, especially with these earlier issues. And me being the type of Spider-Man fan that I am, seeing an issue like this, it's numbered under 50 and it was $50. To me, I buy those every single time. These issues are getting harder and harder to come by. Even though it is a lower grade, that's all good to me because this this is a piece of history to me. I'm going to keep it in my collection and I'm so happy I have it. I know I should be getting more Spider-Man issues. I told myself at the beginning of this year, I think I told myself at the beginning of last year, I'm going to do whatever I can to start to complete some of my amazing Spider-Man collection and fill in some of my missing issues. I haven't really done a good job at that so far, but I did pick up a big one at the end of last year that I can't wait to show off to you guys. But for those reasons, coming in at number four. And next up, we've got coming in at number three, The Amazing Spider-Man, number 238, the first appearance of the Hobgoblin as Roderick Kingsley. Look at that beautiful, beautiful cover. And honestly, this is probably my highest grade ASM book that I own. This is definitely one to send in, and it does have the tattoos in it. I know a lot of collectors, when they buy this, that's the first question. Does it have the tattoos? Because if you send it in the CGC, you're going to get some nasty green label back if it doesn't have it. And it's just going to say the book is basically incomplete. I'm sure CBCS does the same thing. I don't know what their label will look like, but I know what CGCs does. So with this one, it's obviously first appearance of Hobgoblin. He's definitely picking up a little bit more steam. And for me, this one's coming in at number three, not only because I really like the Hobgoblin, 
Goblin as a villain, but I think this is one of the most badass covers that I own. I'm going to show it off again. I think that is just such a beautiful cover. It's creepy, it's colorful, and to me, that just shows what the Hobgoblin is. I'm loving everything about it, and for those reasons, coming in at number three. And now we've got coming in at number two. This is the issue I was talking about that I picked up later towards the end of the year. I'm so happy I finally have one in my collection. And it's actually not in that bad of condition. I thought it was a lot worse, but a lot of these problems are definitely clean and pressable. So coming in at number two, The Amazing Spider-Man 300, newsstand edition, and you know what this is, the first appearance of Venom. I know a lot of people own this copy. I know it's very overprinted and you can grab pretty much anywhere you go. A lot of comic shops have these. They're all over eBay. If you're in Instagram or Facebook auctions, I feel like people always have some sort of ASM 300, but you know what? I finally have a copy and I'm so happy about it. I've been looking for one for the longest time. I didn't want to overspend on one. And this one, I think I got a really good deal on it. So I'm gonna to try to show it off a little bit, you can tell. It's definitely a little bit on the wavier side. If I took it out completely, you guys would be able to see it a little bit better. But I thought when I bought it, it was water damaged. And that's the reason I got a really good deal on it. Because the guy was like, you know, it's got a little bit of water damage. You can tell it's got some staining on it. And I thought, you know what? I'll take this deal. I want one for my collection. I took it home and I went through it. I don't know what he was talking about with the staining because there's not really any staining on it. The cover's very nice. It might be a little bit more translucent on this white section than it should, but other than that, all the waves, all it is is just straight creases and you can get that out with a press machine. I can clean up that white portion and make it look really pretty, but no matter what, I finally have a copy of ASM 300. I grew up, Venom was definitely my favorite. I love that Spider-Man 3 movie, despite Tobey Maguire doing a crappy job as Venom. I grew up, I saw it in the theaters with my dad, and I loved everything about it. And from that moment, that's when I knew Venom was definitely one of my favorite villains. We look at Eddie Brock a little bit different now as the years went on, but no matter what, growing up, Venom was always my number one. So for those reasons, coming in at number two. And now we have coming in at number one, my top Spider-Man issue that I own. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking, how did ASM 300 not make the number one despite saying all of that positive stuff? Well, I'm going to tell you, because right now we have The Amazing Spider-Man number 39. This is the first time that the Green Goblin and Spider-Man discover their identities. And look how beautiful this cover is. Despite being so old, it's definitely in pretty solid condition. So I picked this one as number one because this is the first big Spider-Man key that I've picked up. I know it's not a first appearance or anything major like that, but I love this cover. I absolutely love this cover. It's one of my favorite ones. I have the Volume 2 Omnibus, and I don't know. There's just something about this artwork to me that just completely stands out. And it's the first time that John Romita is on an Amazing Spider-Man series. But as I was saying, this picked I picked this one as number one. Because this is the first major issue that I grabbed. I was at one of my first comic shows and I was just walking around. I saw all these keys. I saw these expensive books. And obviously there was a lot of big Spider-Man ones there too. And I didn't have a lot of money at the time. But I saw this one. It was in my price range. And at the time I was like, this is my favorite cover. I love everything about this cover. It's beautiful. It's in great condition. And I bought it pretty much on spot. I thought about it for a little bit because I didn't want to spend that money. And that was at the time when I was mainly still getting a lot of collected editions, pretty much hardcovers and trade paperbacks. So I wasn't really in the key scene and the single issues, but this is the one. This is the one that sparked everything for me. And now I just go back and I think about that sometimes. I'm just thinking if I wouldn't have never bought this key, I may not even start buying single issues. So for those reasons, this one definitely came in number one because this one just holds a spot in my heart and I will never get rid of this issue. And plus, I love the artwork. So what do you guys think of my top 10 Spidey issues? I know there's other people out there that probably have way better issues, way better condition, but you know what? Those are mine. I'm happy with them, and I can always grow that list even more. But let me know down below in the comments section what your favorite issue was. And thank you for watching my video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you don't want to miss out on any of my upcoming content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and the little bell to get notified. Every time I drop new content, you won't regret it. And I've got two more videos sitting off the side here with more of my comic book content. Click on one of those and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.